Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today I am going to spray baste a small craft bat size quilt. A craft bat is 36 by 45 and what's great about this size is your fabric is normally 45 inches so it'll fit the width of a fabric and you don't have to worry about piecing the back. Makes a quick little project. But I need to baste this together and I only baste two ways. I fuse my basting or I use the spray baste because I really don't like hand basting. So this is the way I like to do it. Now to start with, I have a very big cutting table. You can use any table with this method. So on the top of it, I have clipped a piece of flannel. It's an old flannel sheet and it's been in the wash a hundred times so it's all good to use. And because I'm using this on my sewing table, I make sure that I cover my sewing machine and if you love your sewing machine you might want to cover it for the spray because you do not want any of the overflow of the spray to go on your machine or anything else so what you don't want full of glue, <laughs> make sure you cover it. The next stage I'm going to do is after this has been all tight on the table, the next layer I'm going to put down is going to be my backing. And of course, it is going to be right sides down. Now there is a reason why I like to use a flannel sheet on my table surface, or in this case, my cutting table. It's because the flannel will hold the quilt, the quilt back on it so it doesn't shift. So you do not have to stretch the back, pin it, tape it, or do whatever you've already done on the first surface. So just make sure there's no lint or anything hanging over the edge. And you're able to lay out your backing and take out any of the wrinkles and make sure there's no threads. And then you're going to be able to put your batting right over top of this. So I know that my bat is going to fit my quilt because I have already measured it to make sure. And did you know you should have your batting lay flat for about 24 hours before you use it? Because it helps relax the fibers after they've been shoved in the bag too much. Sometimes we're a little bit impatient and we won't, don't want to do that. So I might hit it with a little bit of steam and relax some of those wrinkles. So what I'll do is I'll take my bat and I will fold it into quarters. I fold it first of all in half and then I will fold it in a quarter. And then I'm able to work on one corner of the quilt at a time and it just is easier for me to make sure that my batting is going to lay perfectly on top of my back and my front when I'm done. So I lay my batting in the first corner. I'm going to flip it over to the next corner and then I will open it up. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So, so far I have my backing already on my flannel and the flannel holds it so you don't have to pin it. That's a bonus with using the flannel. And I have my backing or my batting on the quilt. Now I'm only going to spray half of the batting at a time because it is a small quilt. But if it's a large quilt, you might want to do it in quarter sections, just like you would have folded the batting. So I'm going to just peel this back and I'm going to expose half of my back. And I'm going to follow the directions because each spray is somewhat different. You're going to spray it and then you're going to put it on. So let's give it a spray. Now when you go to spray, there's a little mark on your can. And that mark is where the spray nozzle should be pointing. It will work wherever it is, but it's really good if you use that mark. It just makes the spray come out to the way it's designed to do. So I've given the can a good shake, and now I am just going to lightly spray the back of my quilt. And this is why you want everything covered. And you just need to do a very light spray And then I will fold this on top and smooth it out as you go because you do not necessarily want any bumps in it now. You've gone this far. So I like to bring over a small section at a time and then continue. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel back this side and spray here. Always keep in mind that you need to have everything nice and flat and you do not want any lint in between the layers. Give your can a shake and give it another spray. And again, I will only take a portion at a time, just enough that I can handle. And if you have a really large quilt, this is when you have a girlfriend come over and help you. Offer her a bottle of wine. Yeah, maybe you better have the wine when you're done. So there I have the back and the batting stuck together. The next, now, I'm going to put the quilt top on top of it. So I have my quilt top and it's on top now with, of course, the right sides up. I know this one doesn't look like a quilt top. What I'm going to do is a quilt as you go with this. So I need to have it all one piece of fabric and this is a really easy pattern. So I'm going to just make sure that it fits properly and then I'm going to do the same thing as I did to the back. I'm just going to peel it back halfway, spray it, and then pull that over. Smooth out the wrinkles and then get to the next side. Now the beauty with the spray adhesive is if you do end up with a little wrinkle in this, it's very easy just to lift it up and smooth it back down because it is repositionable. That makes it very handy. And you're done. You will be able to just take the entire quilt off of your flannel, throw your flannel in the washing machine and keep it ready for the next project and you're set to go. You can bring this to the machine and just start sewing. So you can see why I like to spray baste. It's very easy. I didn't have to stretch, I didn't have to pin, I didn't have to hand baste. It really is the way to go. Spray basting is really a nice way to do a quilt and most of the spray bastes nowadays do not gum up your needles. So you really don't have to worry about it. So I hope you enjoyed this episode on how to spray baste a quilt. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.